Shoot it how you carry, carry how you shoot it. Today we're talking about conceal carry. Like, look, you spent all this time, you spent all this money, get your CCW, you got your pistol, you got all the gear that you need, take it to the range and go train in it. So I wear this outfit a lot. Um, training in the ways that you carry is important. You know, if you're shooting it and you're not carrying it or you're carrying it and you're never shooting it, you're not having that real world experience using your tool. So, you know, we can do all the dry fire reps in the world, but if we're not actually putting anything down range, then we don't know um, what our shot placement looks like. We don't know if our draw feels good or anything that we need to adjust. So training is always going to be important. We're just going to rep it out. I'm considering these first set of draws as my warm-up. I'm used to drawing outside the waistband on the hips, so I'm just aiming at a target about 15 yards away from me. It's a steel target, obviously, aiming for center mass and just kind of getting warmed up. A panic scare, you're going to take it kind of slow. This is a semi-new pistol for me, so getting these reps on target is important. Almost more important than the draw cycle, right, for me. I can train draw cycle at home, but shot placement is important when I'm shooting a new pistol. So I'm just going to really be focusing on my hits. You guys do not have to train the way that I do. However, when I start off, I like to start at a slower speed, make sure that I'm getting my sight picture. So it does take a little bit longer, especially because I'm going from normally shooting irons to now shooting a red dot. And it just takes a moment for me to get warmed up on that. And then once I'm warm, I start increasing my speed. Okay. If you're going to carry a spare mag on you, you should be training reloads. And for me, I'm always looking for consistency. So we've seen a lot of people discussing how a certain person reholstered their pistol lately. And the thing is, if your holster, your pistol, your magazines don't go in the same place every time, you're going to be struggling to find where it's at. So for me, I like putting my spare mag in my front pocket because they sit in the same place every time. And I can get that sweep down and call it a day. So if you're going to be carrying a spare mag, make sure it's in the same place every time. That's my cutie from me to UD. Hot. All right. Next up, Glock 43X. I just got this Arc Division slide on top of it. So this is essentially a newly configured pistol because the whole upper is different than what I'm used to. I love it, it feels great, but we need to train on it. So that's what we're gonna do. I generally carry always in my fanny pack or appendix with the ulti clip and the American flag holster. I love this thing from Allegiant Holster Co. I don't love drawing out of the fanny pack because I'll show you. For one, you gotta watch your clothes. But see, I'll have to double time that pole. That's what I have to do. I know that I have to double time it with the rip tab, so that's how I train. One more time, I'll show you here. I double time that pull. Is it ideal? Probably not, but I carry this, and this is how I have to use the rip cord to get the holster, or the pistol, out and get the holster exposed. So I know how I have to draw it, and so that's how I do it, so I can carry it. And then with our appendix carry here, we're just gonna go bop, bop, Bop. We'll just do a couple dry. And one thing about this pistol, because this has been my carry pistol for so long, I'm comfortable with it. I know the trigger, love it. Even though there's a slight difference now with the new slide, it's an improvement. And so for me, I feel really confident just holding it because I've had this for probably three years now. So that just goes to show the more that you train with something, the better you're gonna feel about it. Cause I did not like shooting this at first. It kicked a bunch, it was hard to manage. And then as time went on, A, it got worn in and B, I got more comfortable with it. So let's do some draw cycles from appendix. And I'm actually gonna take fanny pack off for now. I'm not trying to single any ladies out by saying this because it's not just ladies, but I'm going to speak from experience as a lady. I did not like shooting my carry pistol at first because it just wasn't my drive. I always loved my Atlas 1911 double stack and it's what I compete with and I love to shoot it. But because I knew, A, I'm carrying my pistol every day and B, I don't like it. 
that gave me a pretty clear indication that if I don't want to do it, I probably need to do that more. So today we're not just, we're not sitting and we're not training all day long on our carry pistols, but that's not a bad idea. I actually think that I would rather spend a full day training on my carry pistol than train on my double stack 1911, knowing I know how to shoot it. I want to improve where necessary and that's going to be on my carry pistol. So if you're somebody that's like, look, I don't like shooting my carry pistol, all the more reason to go out and shoot with it and train with it. What I really like about this fanny pack is the holster is Kydex all the way around. I do not feel comfortable with any kind of holster that isn't Kydex. I don't like holsters that don't have a hard trigger guard at all. And I don't recommend it to any of my students either. Let's go. I would tuck that in just in general to get to my rip tab. We're gonna take the first few slow, then we'll build up our speed. Man, I just love this pistol. I'm not looking down my sights. I'm just driving it into the center of my target and it's doing well. Of course, when I say that, I need a pickup shot. You know what? Just in this time sitting here, something I'm gonna do when I get back, I'm gonna cut these cords off of these zippers. I don't need them. I have a rip tab. I'm not gonna go, go I can't stand people who are like, this is the ultimate concealed carry fanny pack and you have to go beep, thinks that they're going to have use of fine motor skills in the event of an emergency and be like, oh shit, suddenly I have to save my life. Oh no, let me just unzip my fanny pack and then go. No, big body movements. I mean, that's what I was taught. I was taught by some of the best in the world, big body movements in an event of an emergency. Fanny packs are really important to train with if you're gonna carry them because they're an off-body carry. Even though they're strapped onto our body, they're still considered an off-body carry, at least in my book. And it's important that if you're gonna have to defeat a zipper, you better know how to do that quickly and effectively and have reps doing that so that you feel comfortable and confident and it becomes a reflex. If you're gonna carry without one in the chamber, you have to train for that. It's totally fine if you wanna do that. There's a lot of people that say, oh, you shouldn't do this, oh, you shouldn't do that. I'd rather you carry a firearm and not have one in the chamber and train to know when you deploy your firearm that you have to rack it and get back on than not carry at all and not have a say in what happens to you if somebody tries to take your life. So if you're going to not have one in the chamber, you better be doing massive reps of you racking and going. Love you guys, we all have something to work on, all of us. Anybody who says that they don't have something to work on is a freaking liar. That's it, we did it. Yeah, girl and guy, everybody. Um, I just want you guys to be safe. I want you guys to train. If you have a firearm for carrying, I want you to carry it. But more than that, I want you to feel comfortable and confident when you carry it. I don't think that there's anything more dangerous than somebody that carries a tool to protect themselves and doesn't feel confident using it and then deploying it in a life-threatening encounter. So the best thing that we can do is train in advance, be ready for anything, always be improving, and get to know yourself better as a shooter so that you feel more safe and comfortable and confident in the world. I have classes coming out in fall, winter, spring, and there's gonna be a lot of stuff for ladies. There's gonna be some advanced stuff that I think some of the guys will like to get into. We're gonna be doing college safety seminars that don't include firearms and some stuff for some other certain select groups of people. So stay tuned for that. Follow Struck Society. I'll have those dates out soon. God bless you guys.